I have my uh, tripod up here. Let me shut this door. All right, well, welcome to Flip Classroom Training. Uh, my name is Nick Bennett. I teach at School Without Walls, and I've been there for the last six years. Uh, I've been teaching nine years. This is my ninth year. Um, I started Flip, uh, my Flip Classroom Training, I guess, last year. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit why I flipped my classroom. Uh, my goal today is to show you how I have set up to flip my classroom, give you some of the material that you need to flip your classroom, and to hopefully get you started and to want to try this. Now, my recommendations are you, you don't do it with every one of your classes. If you have three preps, don't try to flip all of them. If you have five classes, if you're teaching Algebra 1 and that's all you're teaching, pick one class and do it, and that's what I did last year, because my principal wanted me to, to have some research and say, okay, which method is better for you? Which is actually working? So, this is a very basic setup. Uh, Mr. Trogish, my principal, made fun of me when I showed him my videos, because he's like, this is not technology. I'm not gonna give you a new software that you have to buy for $100 and learn the software to figure out how to make videos, okay? It's very specific, and I'll talk about um, where I got my training, it was from North, Car uh, North Carolina State Online. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about why I flipped the classroom. There's a couple videos by uh, the, the guy who taught me. Um, and I've got a video here that we'll look at just a few minutes of, of one of my video lectures. We don't have to sit and watch a 10 minute lecture on uh, Algebra 2. But, uh, so there'll be a couple videos that are intermingled here that will kind of get to the point of what flipped classroom is and, and what it's not. Uh, Flip classrooms are not a new idea, okay? Uh, they've been around for a long time. A lot of English teachers, if you have a kid read a, 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 a summary or a story before you come to class and be prepared to talk about it, that's really what this idea is, okay? So uh, I've been doing it a year. I, I did the training um, last year around this time. And this is why I pretty much flipped my class. I really hated teaching for a long time um, in the district. I really, there was days I just didn't want, I just wanted to quit. I was, I, I was looking at other careers. Um, I hated what I was doing every day. I liked the math. I didn't like lecturing. Um, it always seemed at the beginning of the year, I start off really strong, then by January I'm just direct teaching. And I'm standing there, just blah, 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 like I'm doing today. Uh, and I really hated what I was doing. Um, and I had read an article in the Washington Post at the beginning of last year about the flip classroom training, and I'm like, this is stupid. I'm like, it'll never work. I'm like, it's dumb. I'm like, make the kids watch the videos at home. Uh, and so then in January of last year, I started using Moodle, an online learning management system, and I started getting into Khan Academy, and we'll talk a little bit about that because I think about 100 people have told me so far, why don't you just use Khan Academy? Because it's all, all the videos are there. Uh, so uh, I started using uh, the learning management system and I started putting supplementary material together. I would put my PDF lectures online, my PowerPoints, uh, and then I would look for supplementary materials and I was using all Khan Academy. Uh, and, and I put that on there and then I thought, well, why not try making my own video? And so then I started using Camtasia and that took a while to try to start figuring it out. And then I found this. I just one day typed it online, flipped classroom training. And I found this, it was online, and it just so happened right at the time uh, I wanted to do it, they were offering a class, and I got in. So I had to tape a video of myself, send it to them, and it, why I wanted to try this, and I got into the class. So here's some reasons why I flipped my class. Number one, I mean, you guys probably know this, 90% was devoted to delivery of content. Okay, and review. You're reviewing previous assignments. You're taking 15 minutes on a warm-up, okay? And maybe 10% 10, 10 if you're lucky was going to be devoted to, to new instruction, okay? There was not enough time for differentiation if you're standing there talking. Kids are not working together. They're not active. They're just passive and you're just throwing stuff at them. Uh, the other thing here, you're teaching, I was teaching the middle of the group. I had high-level students that were just bored out of their mind. They knew the material just like this, and they could go on. They could do more. I had this middle of the road, 
that, okay, I was lecturing to and they were getting some information. And then I had these lower level students that I wasn't spending near enough time with. Kids that were behind, maybe a grade level, maybe two grade levels behind. Okay, and you, you know that in any of your classes. If you teach in DCPS, you're going to have a big mixture. And at Walls, it's becoming a lot bigger mixture. The, the amount of the, the high versus low is getting further apart. There's, there's more on both ends of the spectrum. Um, very little time I spent on applications of new work. I would sit there, and here's how you solve this equation. Here's how you solve this. With a driver of a silver car, it's in the tank. I'm sorry, DC tag EM2844. Lauren, we need you to move your car. Someone needs to get to another session. That is why, I, when I got here this morning, because last time I got boxed in, I strategically waited for a minute in the parking lot. I'm like, okay. And I saw this lady park. I'm like, there's got to be a lane to get out. And I went behind her. I was like, yes, because the spot I would have been in, blocked in. I was like, yes. So I was really excited about that. I was really excited. So, um, and it, really, I changed the way I teach because I, I hated what I was doing and I, it wasn't really fair um, to the kids. It wasn't fair to myself. I needed to change. I needed to do something that made me better. Now because I flipped my classroom, we all face impact. I was always hovering, you know, three, three, two, you know, in the twos on all my impact reviews. But since I flipped my classroom, I've had three, four highly effective reviews. And I got a four on my last one, and I got a highly effective on my Emmy, which in six years I had, or five years I'd never done. Um, so it's completely changed my, my whole thought process of teaching. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's not easy. Change isn't easy. The hardest thing I do, the hardest thing for me right now is not recording my videos, is making sure I give good work in class. Because it's not just recording a video and saying, here's 15 homework problems, go ahead and start those and do that right now. It is a little bit of that. They do some application. But it's, you've got to have challenge problems, you've got to have activities, maybe some com computer activities, something online. And that's hopefully next year where I'll spend most of my focus is getting better in the classroom. Because now I'm doing three classes and it's, it's, it's quite a bit of work to flip three classes uh, and have videos for all of them. Okay, So that's why I flipped my class. I hope this rings a bell to you guys. If you're already using a lot of applications in class, great, you know, it, it, but it, that wasn't me. I was getting tired uh, every day of lecturing. I don't like lecturing. I hate doing it today. Uh, a traditional classroom to a flipped classroom. So now, in traditional work, okay, let's go back. So, this is, uh, Prezi's new to me, too. I started this this year. I like classroom. We usually start off with a warm-up activity, which would last about 10 minutes, and then we transition into the main event, which is the lecture content, which would last no, I'll go back. Sorry, I wanted to pause it for a second. Um, 40 minutes, which leaves us 10 minutes at the end of time. So this is Dr. Lodge McCam, and he's, um, he is the, the, the one that does this. It's called FIS, Friday Institute. Uh, and there's a couple videos I want to show you. It looks like the first one I already played through, but we're going to look at a couple videos here of, of, of what this is. And the first one you're looking at here is he breaks down what the lecture content is. So it's only a couple minutes long. It's not... It's not terrible. And I hope it starts at the beginning. I don't know why. It's Last period, you are wrap up activities. Now, let's also keep in mind that we may do this multiple times. A classroom can be a highly efficient and effective way of teaching, even if students do not have access to the internet or computers outside of the classroom. So let's consider a 60-minute teaching scenario where we compare a traditional classroom to a flipped classroom. Now, in a traditional classroom, we usually start off with a warm-up activity, which would last about 10 minutes. And then we transition into the main event, which is the lecture content, which would last 40 minutes, which leaves us 10 minutes at the end of the class period to do our wrap-up activities. Now, let's also keep in mind that we may do this multiple times a day for our different class periods, repeating the same lecture content over and over, which is relatively inefficient, and quite frankly, it's exhausting. So let's consider a flipped classroom. And the first thing we learn about a flipped classroom is you take those 40-minute in-class lectures and we condense them to about a seven minute lecture video in this style. I've got some information here. I've got my camera. I don't have any interruptions. I just get through what the students need to know. Now, in, in this flipped classroom, we can take this seven minute lecture video and use the first 10 minutes of class to put that on a screen and have students take notes on that lecture video. Every two or three minutes, we pause, we ask a question to the room, we facilitate a short discussion, and then we hit play. Then we transition into 
when he talks about that, that's how I first introduced students how to take video notes, okay? The way he's set up here, you have, have the board. This is what my lectures look like, okay? But uh, at the beginning, when I first taught my kids to take notes on this, okay, this is what we did. We put, play a video, pause it, hey, this is a good spot to, to write this down. He's not blocking the board. And I'll show you where I block the board because if you don't do that, then the kids will just pause the video, copy the board, and then just go on. And they do that, and then you, you can catch them pretty easy when they do that. It's really frustrating, but... The main event in the flip classroom, which is the activity or application. You have students work collaboratively to create their own learning. And at the end of the class period, we have 10 minutes at the end, we can watch that lecture video again, and students can fill in the notes they missed. Now. A flipped classroom is a highly efficient and effective way of delivering information to students and engaging students because the main event is on the activity and the application, as opposed to the traditional method of teaching where the main event is on the repetition of the lecture. Can you go to the loaded dock, please? There's a, another video I wanted to show. I don't know why I skipped it, but we'll try to go back to it later. Okay, uh, and that's kind of the introduction of, of this. Uh, so some of the benefits to a flipped class, it kind of reverses. You're doing 10% delivery, but 90% of the class is on content, okay? Student learning, students learning, uh, student learning is self-paced. They can self-remediate, and uh, it's not and now teacher-centered. It's, it's student-centered, okay? When we have impact, they always walk around, the, the, my administrator walks around every group, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Do you understand? Okay, now this is a great lab to set up. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what happens if they don't have internet connection? What happens if they don't watch the video? Do you allow them to watch the video in class? Do you play the video in class? And the answer is no, I will not play the video in class. If you have a lecture and you miss it or you choose not to do it, you're either on your phone, your iPad, or a computer and you're watching that video. Can you go to the loaded dock, please? Can you go to the loaded dock? If they don't have internet access, they come in the morning and I have kids watch videos in my room. I have kids watch videos at lunch. It's been harder this year, okay? And I, and I, and I admit that it's, it's been tougher because the, the buy-in hasn't been as good. Last year I had a really good buy-in. I had a really good group of students. Uh, students learning is self-paced. Um, I allow kids to go wherever they want in the unit we're doing, but they can't go on to a new unit until we're completely done. So if I have kids that are three or four lessons ahead, which I do, uh, and they're just going through the content, and I, I do use some online material to, uh, to do additional work called Math Excel. Um, they can go ahead. The other thing I have them do is I have them make their own boards. Okay, we'll get into that. Well, what happens if they finish the unit? You know, and I might be asking, what do they do? Are they sit there? No. They can take a lesson or a unit, and you make them make the boards, and you make them videotape it. Okay, for that you upload it online, yes. So you're saying they're watching the video before they come to yes. class? They watch the video before, yep. And then they watch it again in class? No, no, so at the beginning he said, you could do it that way at the uh -huh. beginning. Like, so if you have Algebra 1, you're like, I'm gonna flip this class. You would record a video. Yeah. What I would do is I would record three or four, and then I would bring that class and tell them what's gonna happen. I sent a letter home last year, and the first video you watch, and you teach them. Okay, you let you put it on there and you stand back and you, you, you go and you pause where you need to, like, hey, this is really good to write down. And the kids will say, hey, well, you're in the way. I can't see the board. Yeah, I am in the way. I will always be in the way. I will always cover up this little portion every time I record because they will wait and pause it. They will look for a pause and now, and as soon as you're off that board, they'll copy down and ignore you. That's a problem. It is an issue, but you catch them on it and they learn. They learn real fast. Um, my calculus kids especially, uh, my AP is really great, my algebra is pretty good, my calculus class, is they do that. They, ju they just ignore me and write down the board. I'm like, well, if I wanted that, I could photocopy this and just hand it to you. Yeah. Okay? Um, so what will happen is when they come in, I'll give them a warm-up based on the video lecture. So I understand that they watch it. And then I'll say, do you have any questions from the video? And then we'll ask them, like, okay, now let me do applications. And we do have a leadership guide, a rotating leadership guide, and I'll show you. I've got the handout here, and I'll email you this. Um, what they have to do each time. They fill out what, I tell them what the roles are, and they have to fill it out. And uh, they have an expected time for collaboration and expected time to present. And it's every time. 
So you don't do the video in class anymore? No, I don't. Yeah, if I, I have, I did this year, if I feel like my kids aren't watching the videos, yeah. or they're cheating and, and, and waiting until I move away, then I did. I did earlier this year. I brought them back and said, but you remember, this is how we do this. And it's, it's a buy-in system. If they don't believe that you are passionate about it, they won't believe it either. Last year, I had, I had a great group of algebra two kids that just flew with this. This year, it, it was a real smack in the face, and it has been. I got, a, I got a four on my impact, and I asked my principal to come into my worst class. I'm like, I have 27 algebra two kids. I'm like, this is tough. I'm like, I need your help because I can't get them to watch videos. I can't get the, it, it was it was bad. They didn't want to do the leadership guide. They, it was fighting. So finally, I was like, I went back to checking their notes every day. And about the fourth day, she came in. And they came in. They didn't know she was coming in. I didn't know she was coming in. I just said, come in. And she's like, I'm coming in next week. And they had, every, every kid had watched the video. And it was, it was to the point where when I had to start checking notes, maybe 15 kids were watching the video out of 26. So I'm like, well, how do I do that? I don't have 15 computers. So it was a real challenge for me, and it was perfect. It was, I could not believe it. I'm like, it was the best day I had with them. It was still the best day. I'm still struggling with that class. So it, it, it can be challenging, but we keep working at it. I don't let them off the hook. Every day I'm like, this is what you're doing. Oh, I hate it. It doesn't matter. You're going to do it. Um, so again, benefits. Uh, this, I love the self-paced. I love the self-remediation. They can watch videos again. They forget that they can do this because they're up all the time on my YouTube page, and I'll show you that. Learning is now in student center. All I do is tell them what they're going to do, the objectives, give them the work, and I walk around. All, I spend 50 minutes walking around to group. Do you have, do you have any questions do you understand? And the last, you know, you gotta make sure you pick correct, you know, good groups of kids. You know, sometimes you can have all high, you know, high, high achievers together. Um, and you gotta make sure your groups are uh, good, which that can be a challenge as well. So, I mean, everything you see is reversed. It's not, you know, it, it really just reverses. You're not doing 90% delivery. You're doing 90% student-centered applications, okay? And that's the hardest part right now I'm finding is, is, is this part for me. Um, making sure I give quality problems, quality work, and, and, and doing that. And that was the hardest part about the training. So let me show you this. The true power of the flipped classroom is that this was supposed to be my video. I had backwards. I can more reflective and it gives them an unprecedented ability to strengthen relationships with students, parents, and the community. If teachers go through the process of flipping their classroom, they become better. And we all know that better teachers result in better student success. However, the general concept of flipping the classroom is nothing new. Having students read a chapter in a book and come to school ready to apply their learning is actually a flipped classroom. Therefore, flipped classrooms are the higher education model of teaching, how you are supposed to learn in college. Now, this worked really well in higher education for a while for two reasons. First, because good education was not for the masses. And second, because students bought into the importance of school and the importance of coming to class prepared. Well, now, as class sizes continue to rise and classes are full of many different types of learners, it is much more difficult to flip the classroom using the read before you come to class so we can discuss model. Most students are not good at reading for the big picture, and many teachers don't know what to do with the class time to engage students. Thus, telling students to read the chapter before coming to class fails if the teacher has no idea what to do with the class time and realizes that the students don't really get the big picture from the reading anyway, so they just re-lecture the content from the chapter in class. Now, this sends a message to students that they don't need to read before class, which is where we are now. Teacher-created video lectures like this are a great way of delivering the big picture information to students, and they're a low barrier activity for this generation of learners who are constantly plugged in to online video content. This allows students a familiar way of interacting with teacher-delivered content that can be revisited as many times as needed, and it frees up class time for teachers to experiment with innovative and engaging teaching techniques. As stated before, this flipped classroom process results in teachers becoming more efficient, more reflective, and gives them the ability to strengthen relationships, which will result in a better educational experience for students throughout our large and diverse classrooms. If I was a reading teacher, or an English teacher, I think at our school would call humanities, what I would do is if you had to read something, I would have you read it, but then I would have a video lecture of the important points or things that you should have gotten out of that reading and when you come to class, be prepared to talk about that as well. So, um, 
in my opinion, the video lecture is important, but you guys are all qualified. You teach math, so it's not, you know, if you're going to do a video on solving equations, you know, it, you can make pretty good examples of solving equations fairly quickly. So that 40 minute lecture is now condensed into 10 minutes, 12 minutes at the most, two minutes per board, about. Okay? And all of a sudden it's like, man, what am I going to do with all that class time? We've got tons of stuff to do. Uh, and it's just, you know, time management in class. So, um, I have yeah. a quick question. Go ahead. Are your videos, are they concept driven, skill driven, or both? I'll show you in a second. So mine are um, concept driven. Mm -hmm. So I teach, I, I don't put section 5 one. I used to when I first started this. Now I just put topic because now, you know, the guy talking about like the park and then the PI, all that, I don't know. And now we're, what are we on? The, um, what's the new one? Common Core, which that's getting flack. I've seen a ton of videos. I mean, it's just, I, that, that'll be gone in, I don't know, 10 years. So we, Common Core will be gone and we'll be on to something else. So um, I just make a topic in the book and I, 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 do, I do follow the, my textbook. I use like two or three Algebra 2 books and pull stuff from uh, challenges, of, challenges of flipping. I, I can't say this is totally easy. Uh, at my room, we share. Everybody shares a room. So recording lessons in my room is very difficult. I can't record during my planning because my room is being used. I used to record in the copy room, but people are in and out. They, you know, copies going off, uh, interruptions over the PA constantly. Uh, so that's very difficult for me. I have to find time. I come in on Saturdays sometimes and record. I'll get like five or six videos done on a weekend. Because um, that, that's been very challenging. You may not have the same challenges. Okay? Uh, students and parents buying into it. Um, not so much the parents, sometimes the students. Uh, I get a lot of emails from parents or when they come to parent teacher conferences, believe it or not, they'll say, oh, you're the, you're the guy in the videos. I watch them with my kid. Uh, we do some other things online. I have online virtual classrooms, webinars with my kids. Um, and the other day we had one uh, before the uh, AP calculus, our midterm, and what, the kid and his dad were sitting there. His dad wanted to check out. He's like, oh, hey, I just wanted to see what you guys were doing. Um, and I'll show you some of these other pieces of technology I use in the classroom to help me. Um, I'm, I'm big into online learning. Um, so those are some of the challenges. Oh, what about the ME? Yeah, the challenge of the ME. I don't really worry about it. I haven't looked at a... a an impact book and I don't even know how long. I don't know TLF, any of them. I don't care. I really don't. People are like, oh my god, the Emmy's out to get me. Good, come and get me. They'll tell you some stuff that's wrong, but they're there to help for the most part. We've got some challenging Emmys, but I don't even look at that stuff anymore. I have the video lecture and I know what I'm going to do in class and it seems to work out and it has worked out. So I don't really worry about the Emmy anymore because I'm confident in, in what my kids are doing and, and coming to class and having good work. Now I gotta get better. My challenge is making that good work, making sure my kids are all using and doing their roles and making sure I keep them on a, a, a timely pace. Uh, and that's the challenge because they'll, they'll goof off and they'll take forever on something which shouldn't take that long. But you know, this is only my, my year into this so I've got a lot to learn. I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, Oh yeah, the research I was going to do, uh, I have some articles, I, I, Prezi's a little weird, I, I didn't have it where I could, you know, PowerPoint where you could have all the, the resources in there. I've got some articles I'll email you links to uh, if you want. I have five, five articles on the flip classroom research. A lot of people are starting to do it in college. I have a statistics article, I have a nursing article uh, that they flipped. Um, and then I have a couple other ones that some people did in the high school classroom. So there's a lot more research coming out about it. They're really good articles. Uh, if you want them, I, I've got your email, so I'll, I'll just email those links to you. I think you're able to get them. I get them through my, I'm in a master's program, so I have access to like JSTOR and all that stuff. So I just, you know, I can, I, I can fully look for research. But last year when I compared the two, there was a 15% difference between the class I didn't flip in Algebra 2 and the class I did. So my flip classroom was 15%. Average at the end of the year, better. The exam scores were 21% different. And that was all it took. My, when my principal saw the end of the year exam, I'm like, well, this is what happened. He's like, holy cow. That's my own research, one, one class. Uh, this year, my struggling class is 16% lower class average right now um, than my other class that is the same amount of kids, 
my struggling class meets four days a week. My other, my solid class meets two or three days a week. Uh, and there's a 15% difference on the exam score. There was a 25% difference versus the kids that are not buying into it and doing the videos to the kids that are. And I told them, I showed them, I'm like, this can't, this is not possible. For the same material that you get, there, there shouldn't be a 25% difference. Unless I'm that much better in the other class versus this, but it's the same material. Same video, same material, same roles, right? And it's that buying. And they were like, you should have seen their faces. They were mad. They were like, that's not right. That's not, you know, they're like, that's not fair. That's not right. There's no way they're better than us. Well, they're doing what they're supposed to. I, I don't make this up. So it's been working for me. Big time. So let me show you. I, I, I'm wondering if my video will pop in. I want to show that. Let me escape this really quick and show you. Um, whoops. Where's that video? Oh, okay. Maybe I did have it in the right spot. I thought I had moved it. Okay, so what is Fizz? And we're going to get into how you video. Okay. This is the class I took. I just, in, from Friday Institute. Okay. Well, Dr. Lodge is the guy you saw in the video. Uh, and Kitty Gimbar are the two of the head of this program. She's an eighth grade uh, algebra teacher in South Carolina, or North Carolina, excuse me, she wouldn't want me to say that. And he's, in, he's a doctor at um, NC State. Okay, uh, they dedicated the fit, flipping classroom. I'm going to show you the website. There's two course offerings now. They have the five week program, which was what I completed last year, and then they have the five week self paced, which is new. It's the same exact thing, but it's at your own pace. This was very quick because almost every week, every other week, it's, you, you, you sign up for it, you get a certificate, they will drop you if you forget like to do your modules or if you forget your videos, they'll drop you out of the course. They're very serious about that. You're almost recording seven videos a week, five to six, somewhere between a week or every other week. Okay, so that was very, I had to do that and I was like, holy cow, it was a lot. It was right during spring break. Thankfully, I came in on spring break last year and recorded all my videos. Um, else I would have, I would have struggled. Um, there's three video, there's three modules. Each module is seven videos, and then you go online and you have to collaborate with other people. What you learned about your videos, what, what's challenging, and it's just an open blog, and that's pretty easy. But there's three modules, and I'll show you that. The self-paced I have not done, but it's the same as a five-week course. You go at your own pace. I'm assuming that they give you, a, a, you know, five week, but you know, you can get ten videos done maybe one week and maybe two the next week. But uh, it's it's all online. Okay, they do have seminars that can come in and teach you, and they'll come in for a full day and help you make videos, set up curriculum, and do in class work, which is, is really nice. I have not had to come up there yet. I would love to, um, but most of my department uh, does not buy into this, so it's just me and one other teacher. Maybe we're going to factor. So uh, here's what one of my video lectures is. Okay. Notice how it's not section five two. So we're factoring, and this is what a equals one. Okay. So I'll show you just a couple minutes of this. I think the video is ten minutes and I don't know twenty seconds, something like that. X squared plus b x plus c. It's now it's important to remember. Oh this yeah. Case, we're okay. Yeah. Like a is one. So yep. what we're really factoring is just x squared plus b x plus c. So there's two things I'd like you to think about when you factor. Number one, you need to find two numbers that are integers, m and n, such that the following two conditions are met. m times n has to equal c, and m plus n has to equal b. Once you meet these two conditions, you go to the second step. You write the two binomial factors, x plus m times the quantity x plus n. Okay, so everything's in twos. Two, uh, two integers, m and n. Meet these two conditions, and we write two binomial factors. So this is going to be the background of our whole lecture today. So let's look at some examples uh, of factoring these types of quadrants. Is that an example of the notes they could could take? They will copy this down. So I'm um, specific. I got my big head. They, they, they'll make funny. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. so here's my example. So I'll copy this down and I try to block as much of this as I can the whole time so they don't. So, no common terms to all three of those. I can't factor anything out. I'm just yeah, attentive like that. Yeah, I, I, I do that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I try to be specific, but it's like 
So always in red, question always in black. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to be very careful. So I know that if both 5 and 4 are negative, I get a 20 as a product. So negative 5 times negative 4 is 20. Those same two integers, negative 5 plus negative 4, add to be negative 9. So I've met my conditions. So I write, in step 2, I write my two binomials, x minus 5 times and see if I was introducing this the first time, first time, I would stop and say, you know, notice here that the signs can't change. They have to remain the same. And these two conditions must be met. That's what I say. But there it is. And, and that's what they see. They will, and, and the kids, they do like it. They're like, oh, man, Mr. Benning, your head's enormous, right? Then what they like to do this year is they'll take pictures of me being funny, print them out, and post them around the room. Yeah. Post, you know, being funny. I'm like, oh, that's cute. You know, they think it's. Um, so you don't, I mean, we don't need to see any more of that, I don't you think. You know they're watching the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they watch. So that's what, so this would be funny, see that, that picture. But that's what they'll do. They'll pause that, copy it all down, and not listen. And that's the, that's the thing. It's not a perfect method, okay? And I want you to realize it's not a perfect method. People will hammer on this, oh, wow, this and this, it doesn't work. Blah, blah. Nothing's perfect. You just make it the best you can. That's all you can do. If you're doing the best you can, Okay, and that's all you need. Now this is great. So this is really old school. There's no program you buy. Okay, so this is Thrifty Whiteboard. You go to Home Depot, and it's actually called Thrifty Whiteboard. I don't know if you'll be able to find it. It took me forever the first time. I was hunting like for an hour because it's usually on the bottom shelf, and I had to dig down to get a couple good pieces. It's not 90, 96 by 48, and you say I need to cut this into six equal pieces. And they'll cut it. They'll cut it free. It's, I think it cost me. $13. And I bought two sets of it. For the I, big one is $13? Yeah, it's, a, it's huge. It's enormous. You can buy smaller ones like this. They're already cut. They're a little thicker, but they're more expensive. They're like $5 a piece. So I actually bought a set, and then I was recording videos. I'm like, oh my gosh, then I bought another set. So I have two sets. I have 12 boards. Okay? So I didn't bring all six, but six boards is a lesson. And so that's the first thing you need. Okay, and this is one of my boards from the Descartes Rule of Signs. So what I do is, I've got my thrifty whiteboard, you got your markers, you need a video camera with an SD card, 16 gigs is fine. I bought this a couple years ago, you need a tripod, you, can, you know. So this is how the setup looks. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll put it on, I turn my camera on, I always have to make sure it's, you know, level, okay, you can see the top of my head, I'm making sure I'm in the way. Okay, I would need a bigger chair for this, obviously. And then I record. I'm like, okay, today we're going to talk about the cards and little signs. And here are the two things that you have to look on. And I can't slide my boards over like they do, so I always have to take mine off. Okay, and I have all six boards lined up. And once it's done, yes? Um, will the video pick up if you use a projector instead of the whiteboards? Will the, um, you mean, can, I re can you record? Yeah. So, and I'll show you a couple of things. You mean like uh, Camtasia, record your screen? Or Not necessarily you can record it on the can. Like, yeah, like have what you're writing there, uh -huh. but put onto the board so they can't see B because it's not displayed. They hit. It was like a PowerPoint behind uh, Not this. So, I mean, you could edit it that way, but this is, so if you did the Fizz, if you went to the Friday Institute, because I was using Camtasia, and they're like, no, you do it this way. You cut your six, they're very specific like that, because if I came in and said, you need to buy Camtasia, it's $99. And then you would have to figure out how to use Camtasia. Then you would have to, it's too much. People don't, if I have to introduce five things in your software to you or two or three, it's not going to work. You're going to walk out and be like, yeah, that was a nice presentation. You need a video camera, an SD card, YouTube account, which is free, Viz lecture boards, which I'll show you. So this is how I do my planning. I pick out what my, my objective is. Okay, and I'll look through a couple different books and I'll pick out all my examples and I write it exactly on here. So I have a board that has the cards rule of science right here. And whatever I write on here, actually, when you translate to here, is, is pretty good. You're like, oh, almost if I run out of room. You, whatever you fit on here, they proportion these really well. And I think they actually did that. They scaled it down. Because when I started doing that and I started filling out, I really didn't have a problem. I'm like, oh, okay, everything that was on that board is on here with no problem. I didn't have to cut anything off. Um, I still use the examples from the book. There's, I, I don't make my own examples. I don't have time for that. But I do look 
and a couple different texts because I like some challenging problems. And sometimes I really save all my challenging problems for class. My story problems, my application problems, and I'll go right through a text. If there's you know common core books, I'll look and say, well, that's a good question. That's a great challenge question. That's a lead event as a warm up, and then I'll have some, you know, what is it? Drill and kill. Yeah, factor this, factor this. Well, what about this story problem? What about this story problem? And then I incorporate all that into what they do in class. I'm not saying yeah, it's, it's the best, but right now that works. And next year when I have all these videos done. Then my whole focus will just be in the class. What can I do better in the classroom? YouTube is free, but access to YouTube is bad, horrible. I give them my password and my login information. There's also schooltube.com, which is free, and that's actually pretty good. I would go to schooltube, um, and we're st I'm starting to transfer videos over now onto that, but I'm not changing mid-year. Um, YouTube is free. If you have a video camera, SD card, check with your IT department. They probably got video cameras, okay? People use their iPhones. If you have a number, if you have 32, you could use that. I haven't seen anybody use it. You just need something to video. Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean the access to that? Well, we can't, my, our students can't just type in YouTube and go. So here's my channel. Um, I think, oh, you mean it's blocked. Yeah, so these are the additional resources. I have them all pulled up here, and I want to show you when we talk about it. So here's my Algebra 2 page, okay? I could log on to it, so what I do every day is I go to Facebook, and it's like, you can't do that, and then I log in with my Mac. Because the, for some reason, Macs in our system are, they, don't, they think they're not actually school computers, so I have to go to Facebook, and then I log into my YouTube. I mean, it's a bootleg, but I get it. Yeah, yeah so I mean, then I'm like, you know, I type in Ben and Ann, and so here's my page. And my kids subscribe. Now, sometimes it's hard to see um, who's watched it. But let's say I want to look at, um, let's see, uh, let's see no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not signed in. So I could go to, let's see, where's my, they change this around some playlist. Playlist? They just changed this. Where's my, there we go, let's go to videos. So here's all my videos. now. I'll show you, I use Screencast-O-Matic for this. Like when I do um, uh, videos for the calculator, I can't do them on that. So I actually use Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, so here's all, all my videos I've been teaching. Okay, you can see like when I do a couple in a row, look, see I have the same shirt on here, here, here. That's when I come in on a weekend and here. They're like, yeah, you're wearing the same clothes. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, I had a good weekend. I had to get all those videos in. So um, a lot of these are from years, you know, uh, last year. Uh, but so here's all my videos, and they're always there. And I, I put them by units, and the kids can go back and, and look at that. Um, let me show you. So there's YouTube. You can go to school too. Um, they have the Flip Learning Network. I get a lot of their posts, and you can you can go on there, and they show you a lot of stuff. I haven't done a lot. I just found out about this. So this is a Flip Learning Network. Um, I get um, articles. They just send them to me um, through. Um, Google Docs, I get them. They just, when they have them updated, it automatically goes there. It's really nice. Um, so that's flipclassroom.org. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. Um, and then, what was the other one? This guy's great. I don't know if you've heard of him. I follow him on Twitter. You want to talk, and I tweet all this stuff. He has so many great things about your iPad and technology in the classroom. So many good things. And, and this is another site. Um, it does do flip classroom stuff, but I wanted to show you some sites I use. For example, I found this app on my iPad, which is great. Like I said, what happens if the kid's at home and they need help? And you, they can't type a question to you, right? They're not very good at Maybe they do. They're like, Mr. Ben, I need help on question 12. This is an app called Show Me. Okay, and it's a whiteboard. And so it's going to open up here in a second. And what I can do is, I can tell you, oh, you know, Mr. Bennett, I'm having trouble solving 2x plus 3 equals 7. So I go up here and 2x plus 3 equals 7. That's a horrible 2, right? I can record this and say, well, Johnny, the first thing you want to do is subtract 3 from both sides. And we have 2x equals 4. That worked out nice. Divide each side by 2, and I get x equals 2. I can stop the recording, okay? And if I go to... Save my show me, save me. I can email that to them directly, and then they can do a virtual. 
Isn't that nicer if a kid has a problem? And, so that's one of my things out here. This is uh, this is called Show Me. There's also EDU Creations, but this one's, let me go back to the presentation here. Um, is there a way for administration to monitor that? Monitor. I just know that one-on-one -on -one communication with students is always like that. Um, I, it, because it goes through email, no. It depends on your administration. If they want, I can, I can tell them. Like if they say one of our things for the CSC is like communication with students. So I will tell them if I send something or I just CC them on it. I'm like, hey, they'll look at the video. I just CC them when I make a video. The kids don't take advantage of this enough. But let's say you're given an exam and you don't want to spend time going through every single problem. And there's like four problems like on our midterm. The kids struggled on AP with four problems. I did this and I did four problems. And I put the four videos on Edmodo. We have it for the DCPS. It's free. So it's like a, almost like Facebook. But I put it online for them on our learning management system. I'm like, hey, check out these four problems before class. Your midterm was done. You need to watch these four videos and take notes on it. And they did. And they came to class. So they're not even waste 30 minutes going over those problems in class after the exam. Yes? What, um, what kind of file is the video? Um, I believe it's an MP4. Right. So they should have opened up. Mm -hmm. I have not had any problems with them opening up the videos. Once in a while on YouTube, it's, it's funky. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll say, I couldn't watch the video. Something happened, and it has. It'll upload, and it freezes, and then my mouth's just, you're not going, and you can just hear words. And so it happens once in a while. So you have to be a little bit lean on that if they come in and say, this video screwed up. Okay, then sometimes I'll have to let them watch it in class because that does happen. That does happen sometimes. And I don't know all of it. Let me, let me take you to the Fizz uh, classroom and show you what this looks like. Okay, so there's Lodge. Um, so for teachers, you can click on for teachers and it gives you two options. Um, so there's if you wanted them to customize train and come to your building, um, which is great. I want them to come to ours. So let's say if you wanted the five week online, it tells you exactly what you need to do. So to be considered for the program, you used to have to record a video, you probably still do. So here is the five, I watched all these videos. For a better chance, use your phone, webcam, digital camera. I did a 30 second video, sent it to them, and complete this classroom form, and that's a Google form. It took no time. These are great to watch. Links right to YouTube, and I watched them, and after I watched them, I was like, this is great. So I go back, and you can look at module one. Okay, so to, to pass module one, you have to watch these uh, six videos. Okay, what to do before you record? You create a Google account, YouTube account, upload your video lectures to YouTube, create a YouTube playlist called module one. Okay, watch all of your video lectures, review these, and then join this conversation. So there's a lot to do. And then you complete it, and so here's Sunday, August 18th at noon is the last session. I was on here for a while. You can go back, and then there's module two, same kind of thing. You'll watch a bunch of videos that they have for you, and it's really the same process, six through 13. Record your videos, upload them to YouTube, watch your videos, and make sure they're, they're accurate and they're good. Um, so that's FIS. It's, that's, uh, I have that, it's teacher.fizz edu.org to get to that site. If you go just to fizz, I think, .edu, it's a little tricky to navigate. So if you wanted the direct link there, um, and then it's the same thing here, okay? So you do make 20 some videos. I think I had 23 videos, and then you have to do a paper slide video, which is, the paper slide video is really neat. I had my kids do this as final project. Your camera's flip facing down, and the kids create a whole unit and uh, they carry notes on a paper uh, and they talk about it. They'll stand above the com uh, camera and they'll, they'll, they'll teach you. It's called a, um, I just blanked on it. What's the name of that thing? I forget. Uh, I'm blanking. So anyway, but that was really, that was a really neat project I had them do. So um, again, with flipping the classroom and not much needed, mostly maybe you do have a YouTube account. That's free. Um, the only thing you really need to get, the boards are $15. Okay, you have, make them cut it there. They'll cut it for you. The guy screwed up mine when I went to the second time to do it. 
I'm like, I need this cut this way. And he told me, I'm like, he cut, I'm like, that's wrong, you gotta do it again. He was mad at me, I'm like, you, I'm like, you got, so basically, 96 into thirds. I'm like, thirds, and I had to go mark the, I'm like, one, two, three, one, and, you know, and mark it off for him. I'm like, that's how I want you to cut the thing. I, he, didn't, he had no clue. I'm like, all right, fine. Um, <laughs> what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take these boards, I think, and I gotta try to figure out, a, 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 I want each of my tables to have a board. So I might cut this into fourths. And each, each kid will have one they can write a problem on. I gotta figure out like the best size to do it. You know, uh, and I want all my kids to have, because you can spend $100 and get the, the whiteboards, but you can spend $15 and get them all cut to what you want. I just have to figure out the size. I don't know if I want it to be square. I don't know if that'll look good, you know, if they hold it up. So I gotta mess around with the size. So it doesn't take much. Um, I think I got one more thing to show you here with the, a couple of different things. Now, this is the way I, I, I flipped my classroom um, with my video lectures, and there should go one more board. Where are you? There it is. Maybe I didn't do it. Um, Dropbox is gone. If you don't have Dropbox, get Dropbox. You can, you, it's just so good. I didn't know about this. Hi. This is great. And people are like, oh, I never know Common Core. There's an app on your iPad. You just go type in Common Core. So I go to Common Core, and it'll open up. And I can look at, OK, there's an integrated math. It's all math traditional. OK, then I can go to, all right, there's Algebra 2. And then here's all the, here's all the things. So if I want to talk about proof, uh, rewrite simple rational expressions, there it is. Rewrite simple rational expressions is right there. Have they updated that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think I just had an update it uh, maybe a month ago. I think there was an update that I saw. I got rid of it because it wasn't matching up with the website. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Maybe they did because I, I did an update about a month ago. Okay. So I don't, um, and so I thought that they have resources on here. So I've used it a little bit. But so I downloaded Common Core. The other app that you have, Show Me, is good. Okay? If you have an iPad or a tablet, it's on Android. You obviously need, a pen. and I, I really hate, I want like a pen, you know, to, and I hate this thing. But it, it works. Um, so those are some ways that I, I use, incorporate some of the technology. If you're going to start this, I would go to school to, school to, and get on their cake. It takes them a little bit. They make sure you're legit. You, I mean, it's not like YouTube, you can just create, you, you, before you can upload, they do a background check that you have to give them your school's website and then the page where you're on the school's website as a teacher. And then they verify that and they call, the school, they call our school to make sure. And you have to give them your email, your, your DCPS email. So I like that, it's really safe. Um, Common Core app, Dropbox, and Show Me are the apps. And your final, people are like, why don't you use Common Core, or, uh, Khan Academy? Because, yeah, Khan Academy's great. They've got videos for everything. You can supplement. And I tell my kids, the best resource you have is YouTube. If you don't know it, type it in. If you can't do something, type it in. And I tell them, my video lectures are not going to be the best that you're ever going to see. They're just not. You might look at it and say, I don't understand you better. And I tell them, it's your job to find something, either come in and get help or look. You can use Khan Academy if you like Khan Academy to help supplement. But the kids got to buy into you. If I just give them a list, I'll watch this video. Well, you didn't create it. You're just going on there. And that's how I kind of got started with this. I looked and I was like, how can I supplement online learning, my Moodle class, like Blackboard? I'm like, what can I do? All my notes are there. Let's look for things that will help my kids. And so I started going to Khan Academy. And then I started using Camtasia, which is $100. And I, it was OK. I could do it at home, save time. Then I took this class, I'm like, this is the way to go. Um, but it can be time consuming, okay? And it, it, it literally takes a half hour to get your board, get your camera set up. And I, I encourage you to, to try it. it. Change is never easy, nobody likes to change. But it, 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 made, it took me from hating what I did for a living and not wanting to ever do it and tell people not to do it to loving what I do. It's a challenge. Teaching is a challenge, okay? But it's the best way that I can teach. And if, if someone's gonna come in and Emmy's gonna come in and say, well, this doesn't work. You're not following all this. I don't care. You can give me a one. You can give me a one all day if you don't like what I'm doing, but I'm still gonna do it because I think this is the best way my students learn. Uh, and and it, it's getting better, okay? Um, 
So uh, I don't really have anything else for you if you have any questions about it. Um, the biggest thing it's like, well, how do I start? What do I do? Your next unit. Okay? You can go in if you have eight units in your algebra, eight lessons in your algebra two book, and it's rational functions, you can go right in order and make here's here's section A1, rational expressions. Section A2, pick out your examples, look for other examples, as long as you have six on there. Okay? The lecture isn't the end all be all. It's not what's going to make or break you. It's not going to be like, oh my God, the lecture was so amazing. No, it's to get them started. They apply it in class. They ask questions in class. How do you get started? I went, I followed what they did. He has a video. I should show you the video. Dr. Lodge has a video going to Home Depot with his buddy. He walks over to where it says thrifty whiteboard. He picks it up and he hasn't cut it. He shows you what he does. When I did it, I went, when I got into the class, I went to Home Depot on a Saturday, got my boards, cut them up, and started doing it on a Monday. I, right during my planning, I, I made a video. I said, okay, here's my planning board, so you get six. About two minutes per board, okay? And I'll give you, you can take as many as you want. I got 50 of these, there's only four of you, okay? So what I would do is, whatever unit you're in, pick one class, okay? And do one video. You'd be like, I want to show you this. I want you to watch this tonight and come in with notes. Yes. I'm sorry, you were on, on a roll, but <clears throat> do you have block sketch? Like I have block sketch on. How would you yes. imagine that? Our classes are 83 minutes long. Yeah, so we have, we're similar. We have Monday, Wednesday the same, uh, Tuesday, Thursday the same, and then we have a rotating Friday. It's like an A-B schedule, I think, pretty much. So how does that work? Um, you know, I only have one class that's 50, 60 minutes, and then all my other classes are, the way my schedule is, uh, 88 minutes, 87 minutes. Yeah. So when they come in, I mean, how do I set it up? Whatever I've recorded the night for them to watch, I'll watch that video. And then I come in with a warm-up, and I'm like, here's your warm-up. You've got five minutes, and it's based on that video. But when they're done, I say, okay, take out your note, or well, as they're doing the warm-up, hi, come on in. Uh, when they're doing the warm-up, I have them take out their notes and I check their notes, and they're worth two points each. And I make sure I check them because if they don't, uh, they'll try to scam you. They'll be like, oh, yeah, here's my note. And it's like, no, that's not the right one. But they learn fast. And then when they're done with that, I, I look and I say, okay, let's talk about the lecture. And I'll have my lecture board out so I know which questions they're asking about. And they're like, okay, there might be two or three questions. Oh, I didn't watch my notes.